Under this cover is an inexpensive adventure tire that provides everything that you ever wanted, except from one major drawback, which you would never guess. But first let me show you what my experience with it was. The first contact I had with this tyre was when I was preparing for my trip to Morocco and searching a tyre that was available in the common adventure bike dimensions like for my T7. Capable of handling everything from bad paved roads over the infamous fesh fesh sand of the Sahara Desert and would last long enough to carry me through the whole country. <sighs> And after I nearly gave up, I received a tip from a friend who's an off-road instructor about a quite unknown tire for a well-known brand. What shall I say? After 7,000 kilometers of road and off-road abuse, I found a jack of all trades, but one. It's the Mitus MC23, which is advertised as a 40% road and 60% off-road bias tire but it goes way beyond these expectations. As a short disclaimer, when I did my Morocco trip, I had the MC23 only on the front of the bike. The rear wheel was an EO9. And when I came back to Europe, I put the MC23 in the rear as well, which means I know how it feels and how it drives, but I can't tell much about the longevity yet. But I can show you what I experienced so far. So I started my trip with this brand new tyre on the southern border of France to get to the ferry towards North Morocco and after the first unusual feeling kilometres I started to get kind of comfortable with it. The first days were some slight off-road and twisties on the tarmac where it did really well but to be honest this is what most of the tyres would easily be capable of but when I got into the dunes this tyre started to shine. So after making an over 4,000 km round trip, I could tell it's good on tarmac, it's good on gravel, and it's good on sand. Wait, a knobby tire that makes more than 4K? And after another 1,000 km on the highway to get back to Belgium, more than 5K? But it's definitely dead after that. I still had enough tread left to ride through the worst conditions you could imagine. So I took it to another off-road tour in the south of France where I put another thousand kilometers of mud, gravel, dirt and street miles on this tire. And after 6,000 kilometers, I think we've got to the point where I can tell you about its weak spot. After I told you about something that's definitely gonna enhance your riding experience as much as a good tire, our sponsor X-Element Motonet, a website-based online platform for people searching for a partner or group to enjoy a ride together, no matter if on or off-road, with a huge variety of meeting points in all around Germany and surrounding areas for the release time period. Join the community, enter your preferred riding style in your profile, plan your next adventure, connect with like-minded riders and meet your new best biking buddies. Absolutely free of annoying ads and without data theft like on social media. If you want to know more, check the link in the description below. So what's the big con of this rubber? First of all, it's loud, like really loud. But looking at this tread pattern, it shouldn't be a surprise. But this thing has a buzzing sound that's just incredibly strong. But to be honest, every time I ride on tarmac, I usually wear my earplugs, so nothing to be too concerned about. The real flaw this tire has is wet grip on pavement, but only when it's quite new, like in the first or second thousand kilometers, or around one and a half thousand miles if you don't like the simplicity of the metric system. It's quite weird because it gives you really early signs of when it's about to lose grip. Because the more and more you lean into the corner, the more it starts to shift outwards and give you the feeling of slipping without really slipping. And what's really weird is that after 7,000 kilometers or 4,500 miles, it has no more issues with wet pavement whatsoever. I could only guess, but I have the feeling that it has to do with the wear of the knob itself. Because the shorter they get, the less they can bend. Because the the further you go down, the thicker the nut becomes and the less bendable they are. But still, a weird experience for me. So what's your experience with adventure tires like this? Maybe you already tried the MC23 or you are considering trying it. If you have some experience in this kind of area, just tell me down in the comments below. I would really like to know if you can compare it with something similarly good. 
And if you watched the video until here, I know that you want to take your bike off-road. That's why you should definitely watch this video to have an easier time with your next adventure.